Hey guys, it's Harley, and today we're here with my top 10 winter houseplant favorites. Just keep in mind that these aren't my all-time favorite houseplants. They're just plants that have been making me extra happy this cold season because they've been growing well. They're just beautiful. I don't know. They're just making me happy this time of year. The winter time can be a rough time for both houseplants and humans, so please leave me a comment down below telling me which plants you've been extra loving this winter time. It's almost spring. We're almost there. We can do this. You guys got this. You're great. You are just lovelies. I am actually sick, so if my voice is sounding different or you hear a lot of, I'm sorry. I'll do my best to keep that at a minimum, but it is what it is. It's that time of year, so gotta do what you gotta do. I just quit my job and I can't afford to not put out a video this week. <laughs> Let's do this. <laughs> Plant number one that came to my mind when I was thinking about my top 10 favorites is my Philodendron Brazil. Philodendron Brazil, and the reason for that is it has just been really low maintenance and easy and it's still pushing new growth, new full size growth, which is really, really awesome. So many new leaves have popped out since even the winter time started, which is pretty incredible, especially because this guy is hidden behind a lot of my other plants. It doesn't get like as much light as you would think that they would need but it's just really full and beautiful and I really loved looking at this one as it hangs on my bed which is where I have it so this has been a really good one for me next up is the Syngonia macrophyllum uh, the Syngonia macrophyllum I think is how you pronounce it frosted I got this one from Arium Botanicals as a replacement plant for the $150 philodendron you may have seen in my houseplant tour that unfortunately died so thank you to all of you who went and commented on their Instagram and stuff to tell them to uh, I don't know that this happened. So yeah, they did send me this plant and it is really beautiful. And I love Syngonium plants. They're some of my favorites. So I'm really, really happy to have this guy in my collection and I just love the foliage. It's unlike anything else I've ever seen. It's been a really fun one. And there's new growth. Look at how cute that little guy is. The next plant I thought up is my White Fusion Calathea. And this guy has been growing like mad. It's so much bigger than when I first purchased it. I'm always noticing new growth popping in. Let's see if I can find some like, I don't know, just lots of new growth. It is known to be kind of a difficult plant to keep, but I think it's happy in my home right now. There is minimal browning, which I'm pretty happy about considering I haven't ran my humidifier in probably four or five days now. It's doing pretty well for the time of year, I would say, and always get so excited when I see new growth on this guy. I don't know, I love that each leaf is unique and it just makes me, it gives me something to look forward to, you know what I mean? So yeah, my Calathea White Fusion. Next up is a Philodendron Red Emerald. For the longest time, I actually thought this was a Rojo Congo, but it's actually not. Somebody named Bailey, I believe, messaged me and told me that it's not a Rojo Congo. So thank you for that, she was correct. And I've really, really liked this guy. This is actually a piece off of my mom's plant, which you can see in a recent video she did on her channel. The vine is just huge. I need to repot it and clean the leaves, but I'm just really, really enjoying how large the leaves are, the coloring of them. It's such a fun plant. And actually, now that I think about it, we do have a few of these, I think, up for sale on Etsy. They're a little bit smaller than this, but it is an excellent plant to watch grow and I love the fact that it trails. I mean like, look at all those roots. That is insane. Such a cool plant. Okay, be careful baby. Don't fall. It's okay. You're good. Okay. Next up is my variegated arrowhead plant. I got this from stevesleaves.com. I've actually ordered a couple from them. This is just the one I see the most in my house because it is placed where I drink my coffee every day so I get an extra good look at this. It is unrolling a new leaf right there. This one is just really beautiful. Again, I love being able to guess what the new leaves are going to look like and each leaf is unique, which I genuinely love so much. And I've taken a lot of cuttings off of these plants and rooted them in water and it is a really, really easy plant to root in water. I've made a lot more plants of this guy that I'm excited to pot up and have all over <laughs> my house. If you don't have one of these, I would definitely recommend it, especially if you've been on the hunt for a variegated monstera, but it's just looking like that's not happening because they are so 
difficult to obtain these days, you know what I mean? So this is a great holdover for the Monstera. The next plant is actually too big for me to move. It is my large golden pothos plant. I recently moved this one from my bedroom into a more central location of my house on a bookshelf and I can see it from here. The leaves are just stunning. It has so much variegation on them and again, it's popping up growth like crazy. I just love how wild this one is growing and anytime I walk by, I'm not even exaggerating when I say anytime I walk by, I stop and take a really close look at this one because it's just a, such a fun one and super low maintenance and easy and it seems to be happy where it is. Next up is a variegated kangaroo fern. I recently got this in my cactus and tropical vlog video so you may have seen this plant already but this one is a really really fun one. I was scared by it because it is called a kangaroo fern and most of you probably know how I struggle with ferns but this is not like a typical fern plant. It is really really easy. I just bottom water it about once a week in the bathtub and it's been really happy. I mean, I hope you can see all the new little growth down there. But if you're afraid of ferns, like terrified of ferns like I am, but think they're beautiful, I would definitely recommend this one for you because again, it's really easy and the leaves are so unique. So it's a great addition to the collection. I keep mine in a brightly indirectly lit uh, space and it seems to be pretty happy. It's hard to know, you know, I think it's happy. Next up is my lemon lime maranta plant. As many of you know, I've been loving like the maranta calathea prayer plants. I have added so many to my collection and I've learned a lot about how to care for them lately and now that I understand them I enjoy them so much more their foliage is just beautiful and this is another one that even though it's like the dead of winter and it's freezing outside the days are really short it still is pushing new growth I mean you can see a new leaf coming in there there's another new leaf there and then also one right there. I mean, there's just new growth everywhere. This is a really, really awesome one. I have taken multiple cuttings off this plant and rooted them in water and soon I'll repot them back into the pot to make it a little bit more full, but this one is beautiful. Although the leaves look very, very alike, the closer you look at it, the more you see that they're actually super unique from one another. It's fun to see the different leaf growth on all of these plants. The next plant is another one that's definitely too big for me to move for this video, but you can see it back here. It is my large peace lily plant. I love peace lilies and I was looking for a large plant to place here that would do well in a semi low lit area. And I found this guy called my name. He called me up and said, hey, take me home. And I said, okay. <laughs> I do need to cut a few of the flowers off. It has flowered since it's been here, but now you can see this one in the back is getting very brown. So it's time for that guy to go. But even without the flowers, this is such a beautiful plant. And again, very, very easy to care for. Since this is such a large plant and I don't want to have to move it all the time, I do keep it in a plastic like bucket thing. I'll show you a little bit of a close up of that where I can just pour water in there and it can kind of bottom water itself. This guy does like a lot of water, but it also likes to dry out between that situation. So it's kind of hard to find that perfect balance, but I think I found it and he seems happy. I love having you here, friend. Thank you for staying alive for me. And then last up is kind of an unexpected plant that I am loving. It is a Chanel plant. This plant um, is most well known for the puffy looking like blossoms it gets. This one has one growing in somewhere. I've lost track of it though. Anyway, this one is growing like mad. It is a little bit more of a high maintenance plant because it does require full sun, but it also likes to be kept relatively moist. So what I've been doing with this guy is I keep him right next to a south window hanging from my bed I told you about earlier. I'll give this guy a good soaking in the sink uh, for about 20 minutes every few days and that has kept him happy. You'll begin to notice that he's thirsty because much like a peace lily, calathea, or even like a polka dot plant. Oh, a lot of plants do that actually. Pothos, really anything that droops when it's thirsty. This guy does just that relatively quickly. So you know exactly when he is in dire need of water. And I mean, the leaves are just getting so big. Oh look, there's one of the flowers. It's getting multiple flowers actually. That's really cool. I'm super excited about that. And then I also try to miss this one as frequently as I can remember to. But yeah, if you don't have one of these, then I would definitely recommend it. It's such a cool plant. Very unique, but also kind of basic in a way. I don't know, I really love it. So those were all 10 of my current favorite uh, house plants for winter 2019. Let me know what you think of my picks. And if you have any of these house plants in your collection, what your top 10 favorite plants have been, or even just your few favorites, whatever you have the time to comment, I would love to hear. 
Um, I always love hearing about your houseplants as well. And you can also send me pictures on my Instagram at Harley underscore G underscore. I share my plant stuff on the internet, but I don't get to see all of yours a lot of the time. So now's the perfect time to share what ones are your favorite and why. And yeah, that is it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in my next one. Bye!